Hello everybody and welcome to this playthrough for Pro and Expert Division with various win for the big top tournament here in Golf Clash the game. Make sure that you do uh, hit that thumbs up button. Also subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification. You can join in on Twitch. We have moved to Twitch when it comes to our live streaming. Make sure to join and follow the channel. And you do have the link to Twitch directly in the description down below. Ultimate tournament guides for Pro Expert and Master are there for you as well. Get your pack on Patreon. Link is in the description down below as well. Info box on the right hand side to get the club distance adjustment, elevation adjustment, also what ball and club type I suggest you to play with. Have in mind that these are all suggestions and you obviously play in whatever way you like. But I do always have a plan when I do play. If you do have any questions, make sure to comment in the comment section below or send us an email to support at goldclashtommy.com. Let's go to hole number one. Hole number one, I will give you two options. One where when you play in headwind and are forced to play on the right hand side instead of trying to bounce over directly. So set your target up at the beginning of the fairway on the right. Three left spin, two and a half bar top spin. And here obviously we need to be careful in, in not rolling into the bunker. So I'm changing in the end to two bars of top spin to give myself room in that case. Max plus 10. You can see that I'm going one and a half ring into overpower with my extra mile, but I would recommend to double that up. So if I go one and a half ring into overpower, I use three rings of overpower instead. No curl whatsoever here. We do have the side spin that will help us in that case. And you can see here now with a perfect ball, the ball will bounce on the fairway and up towards the bunker. Now, for the second shot, we are going to use a long iron here. And here I would recommend to play with the Grizzly or with the B-52. The reason for that is that we do want to have a good ball guideline for the second shot towards the pin. Because now I'm going to go aggressive. Because the wind here is absolutely beautiful to go uh, for a rough bump. So I'm going to do a pin check to give myself some help when it comes to the dial-in part of, um, of the shot. And then I'm using half a bar top spin, one right spin. And you can see here now that I'm moving to have the top of the yellow ring by the rough line. But not really satisfied with the spot. So I'm changing to one and a half bar of right spin instead. Ball guideline to hold. And then we shall adjust 5% elevation through club distance. Again, depending on, you know, if it's a tournament play situation or a tour play situation, it is very important to note down your pin check and the adjustment that you use with your pin check to be able to dial this shot in. Center the ball, hit perfect, and if you hit perfect with the correct adjustment, this rough bump has been a really good shot in the various divisions and just barely rolls into the hole there on the left hand side. But that's the play if we do have headwind. So if we do have a crosswind or a tailwind, we're gonna play aggressive on the drive to make sure to take advantage of that and have a good opportunity for an equal all the time. We're gonna take a look at that now. For the more aggressive option, we're going to use the club that gives us the most top spin possible. In my case, on this account, it's up uh, extra mile level 8. So 6 bars of top spin and uh, 2 bars of left spin. The idea here now is to have the second bounce into the rough above the bunker. And obviously, this is not a super simple drive, but it's simple enough as we do have a decent amount of rough to play on. Adjustment shall be max plus 10, and in this scenario, I do have a little bit of tailwind together with the crosswind, so I need to have that in mind when I play. So I'm gonna push this one up, and I'm gonna push it up to uh, almost two yards. So I'm pushing up basically one yard to give a little bit extra push on this shot, as I did aim with the second bounce fairly close to the bottom of the rough. A little bit of curl to the left. And then you can see the ball bounces nicely into the rough to roll out to be in the center of the shadow. And this is perfect because centering the shadow means that we can go for something that I love to go with, which is a dunk. I love to go for the dunk, especially on this shot, as it is a very simple one. And you can see here that we are very close to a minimum distance club here. And if you are five rings from minimum, then you're going to play minimum distance minus 10% power 5 ball settings. If you are just at a hole, it's going to be minus 15%. Always the blue arrows at your target to be at the back of the cup to make sure that you're not going to fall short because that is otherwise a risk when you go for a dunk. 
Again, minimum distance, minus 10% elevation. I just hit perfect, and this is going to be a super duper chance getting a drop here on hole number one. Obviously, if you do have a dead bounce from the rough after your drive, then you're going to be further away from hole. Then you can, then you have a decision to make. Either you then go to bounce your ball by using the fairway up towards the pin. Then I would recommend to play with no elevation. But if you do go for the dunk from there as well, it's still true club distance. And we're going to use in that case still minus 10% elevation as our measurement. So, for hole number two, you will see two types of play. This because with a a crosswind and headwind, we're gonna play one way. In tailwind, we're gonna play a different with a different club, and that's why I wanted to give you two types of play here. So we're gonna start by having the grizzly packed as our long irons. We're gonna find complete minimum distance with our sniper with the red ring by the rough line. Then I apply spin, which is 3.8 bar spin and then 0.8 bars of side spin to the right. What we do need to think about here, though, is that when we do have headwind, we need to have the ball guy line to get past the pin. Because if you don't, then you will fall short. Medium distance with a 10% over adjustment, which is 1 to 1. So if the wind shows you 5.1 miles per hour, you adjust 5.1 rings. Bounce on the fairway over towards the green and you know now it turns left because we lose the speed If we would be having less backspin the ball will have more speed and would not turn left as it did there on the video So a bit unfortunate though, but this is a tough part three to get a bunch of drops on But in the end tweak it a little bit and then we're going to be there But if you do have tailwind what you're gonna do uh, and then we're gonna take a look at that right now in Tailwind, you can see that I'm using the Goliath. You may be wondering why Goliath and not the Grizzly. It's because Goliath has more power than the Grizzly, and the Grizzly would then have to start so far back that it would be very difficult to get that ball to stop in time because we, you know, would have to play with different spins. Sure, you can play with a B52 here as well if you do have it in a high level, but it's more common that you do have a Goliath in a, at least level 6 plus, even if you are in a low stage of your game. Half of the red ring inside the rough, we are in complete max distance. I'm using backspin and sidespin as well to have the ball guideline to point right of pin to compensate for the wind push that we are going to get once we do hit the ground. Adjustment max plus 20. Hit perfect and this ball is going to be close. You can see here now that we need just a little bit less, sorry, a little bit more adjustment, not less obviously, and or to have a little bit more side spin. You decide obviously which way you want to go, but as we do not have a good ball guideline, which you will have if you do play with the B52 7 or better, but that's not really going to be that common in Pro and Expert. But if you do, then obviously the ball guideline is going to be much easier to use as a, as a reference. I would prefer to play with a sniper, obviously, but once again, it can't be done if you do have Tailwind because then you will go in between clubs. So two options for you on hole number two. Hole number three, we're gonna play the drive first, not the second shot first. Oh my god! So we're gonna start with the drive, which is gonna be played with the club that you gives you the most power and curl possible, which means that we're gonna limit ourselves to Apocalypse level 4 plus for this aggressive drive. Max top spin, which is gonna be in this case 5.8 bars, and then one bar of left spin. Adjust max plus 10, then we go with full overpower and full curl to the left. Our intention with this drive here is to play this one in crosswind and in tailwind because we do want to go over the rough and the sand to try to gain as much distance possible in those type of wind directions. But if you do have headwind, you cannot do this type of play. Then you need to bounce before the rough and sand to try to roll as far as possible. Then there is value in playing with drivers with a lot of top spin. So if you would be limited with an Apocalypse level 4 or 5 or an XML 8 or a Thor Summer level 5, then use the big topper instead as has a lot of top spin. But please make sure to stay with any type of power 5 ball. Because the power 5 ball is going to be very important when it comes to the second shot. To always have power enough to reach to play for the funnel. Max backspin and, a, and half a bar of side spin to the right is what I'm using. But most importantly, look at my ball guideline position. 
the second bounce is gonna be three green squares past the pin, but two green squares to the left of the pin. And the reason I want I say that with such an important face is that then we will be catching the funnel. Because if we play for the top left of the green, there is a muscle funnel area which will bring you a possibility of dropping this shot even with a great left or a great right. Minus 5% elevation through club distance. So if you are in medium distance, as we are here in the video, then you play medium distance numbers. But if you are going to have to bounce over with your drive, as we do have headwind on the drive, then we're going to play this one at max club. And we'll most likely use a little bit of overpower as well some of the time. So be prepared for that. In my opinion, hole number three has gone from when it came into the game to be like, a super tough hole and just an eagle and run to actually become a very good opportunity to an albatross. So we're gonna start by showing you an option when it comes to a bounce over, which is gonna be a route that is gonna be completely safe in terms of you're always gonna get the birdie, but it's gonna be much tougher to get an hole in one. So what I would like you to do is to have half a bar of topspin, three bars of sidespin to the right in tailwind. If you would play this one in crosswind, I would recommend to increase the topspin with half a bar. And if you do play in headwind, we need to increase the topspin a little bit more as well, you know, to compensate for the different type of wind angles. You can see that I have the blue ring by the rough line with the bullseye just at the top of the shadow as reference. Adjust one to one, which is medium distance and 10% over adjustment. And I'm using outside wall curl to the right. Here we need to have more curl. And that is pretty obvious. The, you know, speed of the ball is nicely. It is a little bit downhill after the pin. That's why it shows that it you know, misses badly. But increase the curl a little bit more than that then you will definitely get closer. But again, as we have to use curl because, you know, we want to keep ourselves with side spin three. Sure, there is side spin four balls and side spin five balls nowadays, which would have uh, would make you prevent from using uh, any curl. But if we're using a side spin three ball, we need to have, cur uh, have curl and a little bit more than outside wall curl would be great. But for those of you that want to maximize the chances for an hole in one and also wants to take a little bit more aggressive route, then the rough bump is the best option uh, which comes here. For the rough bump option, we are going to have a tailwind to display this type of shot. And I want you to play with the sniper level 9 plus. If you don't have that possibility, you need to change to the Cataclysm or the Guardian to be able to play this type of shot. Because sniper level 8, level 7 or level 6 won't have the power enough to play here. So, we have one top spin and we have 0 0.6 bars of left spin. We are looking to have the ball guideline approximately one green square short of pin with the ball guideline pointing to the to the left side of the cup based on standing at the at the tee to, and looking at the pin adjustment max plus 15 power three ball settings and now it is important that you do hit perfect or great right because a great left will have a risk of missing the rough great left though and i was very very scared for that to happen but i do hit the rough and I do drop this one just barely on the left side of cup, which means that what we're going to adjust here is that we will be adjusting max plus 15 power four ball settings, not power three ball settings to be able to get a little bit more decimals and make sure that we kind of replicate the outcome that we got here with a great left. If you do have a headwind and want to go for a rough bump, that is absolutely possible. But then you can only play with a power one ball, uh, sorry, a power zero to power one ball uh, maximum. Because if you don't, then you will uh, not have room to do the rough bump and you will play with a driver instead. Unfortunately, I don't have a video for you to display that, but that's the way to go if you want to do a rough bump in headwind. So, hole number five, and this is going to be, regardless of what wind direction we do have from T, it's going to be a very good chance for a drop. I would almost say that a perfect is always going to be in on the second shot if adjusted properly. Six bars of top spin, two bars of side spin to the right. When would you play in headwind? If we do have crosswind, I would recommend to go down to five bars of top spin and in tailwind, four and a half bar, because we don't want to go too long. 
I think it's very important to have that said because we do want to stay in short iron range and not go into wedge range because then the second shot is going to change massively. Max plus 10. Ball guideline with added spin straight down the fairway. And you can see that we do want to be, you know, here it's perfect. Like being at the top of this shadow, not rolling longer, around 330 yards to, to 340 is going to be perfect. Because now we're going to end up into a situation where we're going to look for this massive funnel. Look to what, what I do. I go to minimum distance first to try and then to maximum distance to judge my club distance. Then you can see here now that I'm positioning myself. Uh, with a ball guideline that is straight to the hole you can see here now and you can see that I'm wiggling left and right and the ball guideline is not going to move which means that I have definitely a lot of room for error everyone that has played this, sh this shot before knows how important not important knows how good this funnel is in terms of consistency so once I find the spot with the ball guideline straight to hole, because it's important the ball guideline is straight and not uh, massively curved, because if it is straight, it's easier to catch the funnel than if the ball guideline will be curved. 10% elevation, true club distance, and we bounce on the first pad, rolling it on towards the green, and right that pin for a beautiful eagle here. So, a couple of things that is important, don't go too far on the drive. Second shot, look for the funnel, straighten the ball guideline out, and this hole is going to be a very fun one for you to play in tour play or in tournament play. Yes, the drive, the drive, the drive, the drive. We want in headwind to play with six bars of topspin. So it doesn't matter if it is an extra mile or it is an apocalypse or a Thor's hammer. Use the club that gives you six bars of topspin. Plus, if you can use more topspin in headwind, use that. But in tailwind, I want us to limit us to six bars of topspin and crosswind the same. Adjustment shall be max plus 20. And the landing spot is going to be where it wherever on the fairway you can then find the ball guideline to point straight over the center of the bunker and that's going to be with spin applied i'm using six bars of top spin two bars of left spin adjust once you have adjusted you need to then measure how many rings do you go into overpower and use that amount of rings as overpower so if i go two rings into overpower i'm using two rings of overpower Second shot is going to be a two-way play here. And I'm going to play, uh, play for you the first. That is not the, <laughs> not the drive again. But it's going to be the second shot that is going to be the safer of the two. With like basically no risk. And a limited chance for a drop. Now we're looking to play on the left side of that tree. Trying to get the ball guideline you know, to be close to the hole. You can see here now that I'm somewhat trying to aim just a little bit left. Trying to have the wind to be and the spin together to push the ball towards the pin. Also using backspin to the ball guideline to be just above the pin here. This is a difficult shot and using no elevation uh, together with true club distance. So again, if I'm playing in max club, then I play max. If I play in mid club, I play in mid. It all depends on where you're gonna end up with where you end up with your drive. So a perfect ball here. And we see the ball then bounce on the fairway over the rough patch and then up towards the green. And we can see here now that we are somewhat... It is not a bad shot, but we are having a compressed ball guideline. So what we need to do here is to have the ball guideline to be even more past the pin to give this shot a chance. For those of you that do want to play aggressive, if the wind allows, because if the wind is going to be right to left crosswind or a left to right crosswind, this shot is not going to be possible. But if we do have a straight tailwind or a wind coming northeast direction, we do have the possibility to actually play a rough bump in between the trees. This is a very aggressive line and it does require a spot on adjustment uh, from yourself. Having the bottom of the yellow ring by the top of the bunker and then ball guideline just short of hole because we need to have in mind that in tailwind we do have an extended ball guideline so we need to make sure that we leave the ball guideline short otherwise we would come in very hot, hit the pin and bounce out. Adjustment is still going to be no elevation here and it's going to be once again be true distance, uh, true club uh, numbers. Perfect ball. 
Now you see the ball hitting the rough nicely. It rolls up towards the pin, and in this case, we're getting it to drop for a lovely albatross here at hole number six. Not something that I do expect to happen every single time, but I do expect myself at least to hit perfect on the second shot. Then it's up to you to decide what type of risk you want to take here. If you want to play on the left side with a, you know, with a less chance for an albatross, but it's going to be a safe eagle all the time, or you play a rough bump if the wind direction allows. And you increase this, you increase the chance for an albatross, but you also increase the risk. So you will see two options here on hole number seven. One where we do lay up and play safely with a good chance with our long iron, and one where we do play aggressive and attack the pin with our wedge. So we're going to start by using the quarterback here for the layup option. The quarterback on the rock doesn't really matter because both of them has a really good accuracy and a good ball guideline. Five bars of backspin and I'm using in this case two bars of side spin to the right and I'm boxing in the blue ring. What I mean with that is that I'm having the blue ring by the bunker to the left and the blue ring to the uh, right by the rough. Changing backspin again because I backed up the position, so I need to correct myself. Three and a half bar backspin and three bars of side spin to the right. Medium distance with a 10% over adjustment. Hit perfect and you will find yourself in a nice spot. You can obviously hit great left and great right and you will still be safe on the fairway. Obviously, ultimately, we want to hit perfect all the time. Even if that's never going to happen, that we hit it every single time. 260 yards kind of our aim point which means 259 is definitely a good thing now second shot play with the grizzly or the b52 uh, if you have b52 7 plus you use b52 otherwise you use the grizzly because we do want to have a good ball guideline so now you can decide either you use the slope on the back of the green so you basically miss the pin to have the ball fall back down to you or that you're using uh, the grizzly and attack the pin directly Ball guideline to be just short of hole when it comes to tailwind. Be careful when it comes to tailwind that it is, once again, important to have the ball guideline short or you will find yourself coming in too hot. 15% elevation in its true club distance numbers. Here I would recommend for those of you that do want to be a bit more detailed is to uh, do true club distance here and use the yardage notes. So 259 and then try to dial it in based on that number. Bounce on the fairway and then roll towards the pin. Write that pin for a beautiful eagle here in hole number seven. So if you do want to play more aggressive and you do maybe have a little bit better clubs, then let's take a look at what we can do uh, if going more aggressive. For the more aggressive option on hole number seven, you can decide to do one or two ways, which is the first one is that you use a club with a lot of top spin. I would recommend to have seven bars here, which makes the big topper to be a perfect club in this scenario. But I'm using the extra mile to show that it's, it is possible to a degree. Max top spin, max left spin. Adjustment is max plus 10. We adjust and then we shall push up to max. But I'm not doing that first, but then I'm changing and I'm not pushing up to max, I'm pushing up three yards. So just ignore me. <laughs> Push up three yards, half a ball of curl to the left, hit perfect. And the idea here is to, with a very safe way of playing, bouncing on the fairway over to the other fairway and roll past the, um, the trees. The thing is though, we could definitely have gone to push up to max because now we definitely have the trees in our face. What do you do if you do want to play with an apocalypse here? I would recommend to use all the curl that you have and play left side of the bunker instead of the right side that we are playing now. To try to just curve it around, you can get more distance on the fairway and therefore have an, a little bit easier time to not get stuck behind the trees. Second shot, we play an Embringer, and here obviously there is an issue with if we do have the trees in our face, but it's not the, it's not the end, so to speak. We can actually then use the slope that is on the left side of the green and still attack the pin. So you, what I want to say and also wanna, what I want to show with this is that you're not dead, right? So you aim and you aim on the fringe, and we're going to play, in this case, uh, EB School plus 30 from this range is what has been working for me. But at the same time now, now we use the slope, which will most likely become a slightly different type of play. 
if we would be having an open shot towards the pin, then it would have been a different story. You can see here we bounce up and we're using the slope right at pin for a lovely eagle here in hole number seven. But again, the hard part with uh, this aggressive shot is that we do need to get the distance and we do need to get past the trees in a way to have a shot towards the pin. Because if you're not past the trees, then it's kind of game over and you have to just lay up and take your, uh, take your shot then for a birdie instead. But hole number seven offers two interesting way of place. That's why. So let's take a look and we're going to play with our sniper. And I would recommend to play with the sniper with basically every type of wind here. And the only difference is that we might play slightly different position if we do have tailwind. I'm gonna start with the top of the white ring by the shadow, right side of the yellow ring by the rough line, and then I will apply spin. So I will start with finding the position to then apply spin. Two backspin and 2.8 bars of left spin, and then the adjustment shall be minimum distance with a 10% over adjustment. We do adjust for the shot, and then it's time to take the shot as well. Center the ball, make sure to not have any underpower, overpower, or curl, and hit perfect. The ball would then bounce on the fairway up into the uphill slope and then lose speed a little bit so we don't come in too hot. Now we just barely get it in on the left hand side but I will take it obviously because it is a drop on a tough par 3 which is hole number 8 of the Parc de Paris. So let's start off with the rock and I want you to play with the rock if we do have tailwind or crosswind because it will give us a better accuracy, it will give us a better ball guideline and therefore a much easier drive to get the ball to where we want it to be. We want the ball to be as close to the top left corner of the fairway but again we don't have to have the ball to be just just um, just flushed by the to uh, top left corner, uh, top left corner or the rough line. We can have the ball to have a little bit of margin there at least. Max plus five, two bars of left spin, and whatever spin that makes the ball guideline to go approximately two rings short of the rough line in tailwind. If we do have crosswind, we obviously need to think a little bit differently as we don't have the same wind push. And that's the same in headwind. As in headwind, we do have a, a compressed ball guideline. We need to then have more top spin in that case. Get the ball guideline as close to the top there. And I would say like this, if you have the possibility to play with a power four or a power five ball, that's going to be a massive help, especially when it comes to the second shot. Because the second shot is going to be one or two ways. It's either going to be a safe play where we just bounce in between the two trees and roll the ball towards the edge of the green, or we go aggressive and we move our target a bit more right, and we are attempting to do a rough bump towards the pin to actually give ourselves an albatross attempt. Have in mind here that this is the only way to get an albatross here that is somewhat, uh, a, a like a decent chance but again you can see how many trees there are so it's all up to you if you want to take that risk or not i'm using the horizon here due to the ball guideline and not really having a good level of cataclysm but if i do have cataclysm level 5 plus i would be using that club instead of the horizon all day and every day mainly due to the better accuracy as the accuracy on a horizon is terrible and a great ball then would be a terrible outcome so if you hit perfect and you feel that comfortable, you can go for it. Obviously, adjust it a little bit better than what I did there. But you can see that's the way to get an albatross attempt. But again, if you're not interested about that, move your target more left again. Bounce in between the two trees. Roll the ball out. Take a simple wedge for an eagle and be done with hole number nine. Thank you so much everybody for watching this playthrough with various wins for pro and expert division for the big top tournament here in Golf Clash the game. Make sure that you join us on Twitch where you can collect virtual golf balls uh, there with us and you can redeem uh, a bunch of fun stuff in our store. Link to Twitch is directly in the description down below. Also the ultimate tournament guides and exclusive tour guides you can find on Patreon. Link is also in the description down below. Video sponsored by Golf Clash and Playdemic. Thank you so much for watching and good luck in your Golf Clash game.